Chapter 13 Fallout Outside of the school, a cold, gusty wind tossed the trees about, and the clouds above looked ominous. Mercifully, the rain never came, and the winds slowly settled. No bus waited for Kara and Alex as they were leaving Leesburg High two hours before the final bell of the day rang. They took their time going home, stretching a 45-minute walk into an hour. They had a lot to talk about. This is the way we always go home on the bus, Kara said, urging Alex down one path. If we walk that way, we'll be walking on the highway. This way is safer, Alex said. And they turned down a road that led to a bike path, and Kara was skipping like they were walking just for fun. Alex smiled. She felt like everything had just crashed around them and shattered into pieces, and she was only now realizing that none of that stuff she had been protecting mattered a bit. Alex had been letting everything in her life that she hated block her from being with the one person she truly loved. She felt stupid for not realizing it sooner, but was grateful to discover her blunder before it was too late. A fork appeared on the bike path, and they paused to consider which path would take them home. Alex took advantage of the delay by massaging her feet. Her shoes were meant to look good, not to be walking around in for miles. Let's just pick a path. Both paths are heading in the right direction, kind of, Alex finally suggested. Kara furrowed her brow, looked around, then smiled. Let's see, she said cheerfully as she floated up like a balloon just above the treetops. She surveyed the area and pointed to the distance. There! Okay, we go left, Alex said, smiling, and she watched closely as Kara floated back down towards her. Kara was not paying attention to the wind or the effect of her descent, as her skirt was tossed around like a flag. Alex got quite the eyeful. A little drafty down below, isn't it? Alex teased as she shivered, knowing full well that her sister barely felt the cold, but of course, her question had little to do with the weather. Huh? Kara asked, but quickly understood. She nodded a little awkwardly as they continued walking. This was not a conversation she was eager to have. So, that was a mistake, right? You were in such a hurry this morning, you forgot to put on your underwear? Alex suggested trying to understand how they got to this point today, but not wanting to sound like it was a big deal. Kara first nodded, then shrugged. I guess. That was a frustrating answer for Alex. Is this something people did on Krypton? Kara looked at Alex quizzically. What do you mean? Do what? I don't know. Wear tiny skirts with nothing underneath? Show off to strangers? Stuff like that. Well... Kara began, taking the question seriously. Then she paused to reflect. We didn't wear underwear back home, but we didn't have any mini skirts either. We weren't ashamed if people saw any part of our bodies, but I guess we didn't tease people like that either. I don't understand why you did it then, Alex said, hoping Kara could explain. Kara shrugged. I don't know. I just thought it would be fun, I guess. Lena and Eric were into it too, so we did it. Alex sighed and felt depressed by that answer. She hated that Kara was treating this so trivially. She hated that Kara didn't even consider her feelings when she did it. Kara noticed her mood falling. She stopped skipping and asked, What's wrong? It's nothing, Alex said, waving Kara off. I'm just feeling selfish. Kara stepped in front of Alex, and they both stopped. What do you mean? Why would you feel selfish? Because it feels bad knowing that other people are seeing you that way, Alex said, cringing at the sound of her own voice. She felt like she was whining, but she had to say it. I just thought that I could be enough for you. I'm selfish because I want that part of you for just myself. They stood there, staring at each other for a moment, as Alex's words sank in. Then, Kara hugged Alex and smiled sadly. I think that's what I want too. I think that's why I did it. Maybe. Partly. 
I don't like you being reasonable all the time. Not about us. I want you to be selfish about me. I want you thinking about me like that. Alex raised an eyebrow. So you won't be doing stuff like that anymore? Kara nodded and raised her hand as though being sworn to court. I promise to wear panties at school from now on, or at least longer skirts, and the only person I will tease is you. Alex laughed. I'll hold you to that. But you have to kiss me every day, Kara insisted, leaning in close. Sounds reasonable, Alex agreed, laughing as she eagerly commenced fulfilling her promise. The driveway was empty when they arrived at home about 90 minutes early. They knew Eliza wanted to ambush them in the driveway after school to prevent any funny business, but the joke was on her. The girls knew that they had at least an hour before they had to face their mom, so they plopped on the couch, almost into each other's laps. Kara clicked away at the TV and felt annoyed. I don't recognize any of these programs. Alex was still shivering from the long walk home in the cold. She slipped out of her shoes and winced as she examined her blisters. Kara showed Alex her perfectly healthy feet and stuck out her tongue. Then Alex bashed Kara over the head with a sofa cushion. Kara stopped clicking the remote, allowing an obscure soap opera to take over the television. The screen showed a young couple making out. It was a welcome thought that drew Alex closer. The girls huddled together under a fleece throw, and Kara lent Alex her warmth. They quickly found a position where both girls felt snug and settled in like cats under a sunbeam, where they rested their eyes and ascended into a blissful cat nap. Too soon, Eliza drove into the driveway. Of course, they knew this time would come, yet knowing did not help Alex prepare for it. She was never able to confront her mother. Her anxiety would build up so high that her mind would stop working, and she could barely talk. So she either had to accept whatever law her mother laid down, or escape by running into her room. She could do neither today. She needed to set her own rules. Yet, she wasn't sure how to go about that. So the girls let their laziness dictate the manner of their disobedience. They refused to move. Kara had settled on top of Alex, with her head resting between Alex's pillows, refusing to stir. A moment later, Eliza was standing over them, quiet as a mouse, and she stared at her two girls, waiting for them to notice her presence before she would pounce. The girls tried to ignore her, but Alex could not keep her eyes shut and stared right back up at her mother and asked simply, What? Alex expected an explosion, or at least a strong rebuke, but when Eliza saw the brazenness of their rebellion, she contained her emotions like a dam holding back a river during a storm. Finally, she stormed out of the room and disappeared into her bedroom. Alex watched in wide-eyed wonderment. How had she turned the tables on her mother so easily? During the next commercial break, Eliza emerged from her room, wearing a humble expression she rarely ever showed to her daughters. Alex and Kara were still cuddling on the comfy couch, so Eliza sat down on the matching chair beside them. She took the remote off the table in the middle and muted the TV. Eliza folded her hands in her lap, cleared her throat, and then she spoke with the same tone she used when speaking to other adults. It's clear that you and Kara have made up your minds that you don't want to be sisters anymore, Eliza said. The girls glanced at each other and shook their heads because that thought had never occurred to them. Well, it's either one or the other, but whatever you want to call this, it's fine. This is not the kind of family I had imagined for us, but it's fine. Eliza said all this, sounding like it was anything but fine. In fact, she sounded like she was in mourning. I just want you girls to realize that this thing is going to draw attention to you and Kara. Everyone will be wondering why two sisters would act this way. They will wonder how long Kara has been with the family. 
They will ask where she came from. All the questions we don't want them to ask. You will need to have the answers ready. So you need to be discreet and work hard not to draw attention to yourselves. Just promise me you'll try to do that. Kara and Alex stared at each other, wide-eyed for a moment, remembering the past few weeks, and then this morning, and try as they might, they could not suppress a laugh. You need to take this seriously, Eliza said sternly. There are people out there looking for Kara, and others who would cause hell if they knew she existed. People like who? Alex asked, with both curiosity and suspicion. She had heard this too often before, but had never received an explanation. Of course, she would do anything to protect Kara from any threat, but she was not accepting Eliza's warnings blindly anymore. For a moment, Eliza looked like she actually might tell them those big secrets, but then her stare hardened. Just promise me. Kara and Alex both shrugged. They were annoyed that Eliza was still keeping important facts from them, but this lecture had gone better than they had expected, and they didn't want to push their luck. Eliza didn't know yet how many of their family secrets were now common knowledge, and none of them wanted for Kara's biggest secret to come out. So Alex said for both of the sisters, Sure, Mom. We promise. Eliza allowed herself a weak smile and a nod. Okay. I'm glad we had this talk. I'm feeling really tired, so I'm going to rest for a while. Order pizza if you want to. Kara and Alex sat up quickly. The magic word pizza had conjured hunger in their bellies, and they immediately began debating what toppings to order with it. They didn't notice or care much that Eliza quickly retreated into her room and remained there for the rest of the night. The pizza arrived in 20 minutes, which is barely enough time to even cook it, Alex thought. The smell of pizza right out of the oven was like paradise, so they tipped the delivery boy exorbitantly. When they opened the box, the cheese was so melty and hot, they were too excited to relax on the couch. Instead, they did something ill-advised. They decided to check online and see what chaos they had wrought in school that day. They each carried a dripping slice into Alex's room and huddled around the computer as Kara's old CRT monitor warmed up. So how will Cookie attack us today? Kara asked rhetorically, acting almost bored at Cookie's antics at this point, as she ate half of her slice in one bite. Maybe she'll leave us alone, now that we're doing her job for her, Alex said, both sarcastically and hopefully. These hopes were dashed when the chat room opened up. Of course, Cookie would pile on, but the tenor of the discussion was very different from previous days. Crystal Girl wrote, It's really disgusting. I hope they wiped off that seat before someone else sat down. Peggy Sue wrote, I hope she wasn't on her period. Skins Fan wrote, Ew, you guys are such a buzzkill. Crystal Girl wrote, Don't tell me you wish you had been there. Skins Fan wrote, of course I wish I'd been there. Everyone does, right, Watcher? Watcher wrote, Leave me out of it. Crystal Girl wrote, I hear finally they're going to crack down on the dress code. About time. Skins Fan wrote, Oh, God. Cookie wrote, Don't worry, girls. That slut has got everyone going gaga like they just saw a pig riding a bike. But eventually, they'll settle down and realize... It's just a pig. So now I'm a slutty pig, Kara asked, more amused than upset. Of course not, Alex reassured, then seemed slightly disappointed. Cookie is usually more clever with her insults. Just then, a pop-up appeared indicating that Alex had an email, inviting her to join some MySpace group. Alex received such invites almost every day, as fellow students in the school had the nasty habit of inviting the whole student body every time they started any new group. MySpace made that too easy to do. Alex casually opened up the pop-up, prepared to decline the offer, until she saw the name of the MySpace group. Kara Danvers Rocks. 
Oh my god, she gasped. What? Kara asked, then looked at the screen. Uh, oh, what does it mean? Alex shook her head. Let's see, she said, then clicked the join link, transporting them into the new MySpace group. The top of the page said that the group was only about 12 minutes old, and it already had 46 members and 21 messages. The moderator was anonymous. Both girls held their breath as Alex clicked open the page, which was a lot like a chat room, except with more bells and whistles, and they had to click refresh manually. Moderator wrote, Yeah, I was one of the lucky guys in Henke's biology class with a front seat view, and I'm dying to hear what you guys think. That was the hottest thing ever. Cindy wrote, I guess it was really funny, lol, and even kind of hot, I guess, but what makes it so special? All of us girls have one of those, you know. Moderator grinned and wrote, Prove it. Andy wrote, I think it's terrible. It's so demeaning to girls. It reduces us to sex objects. Kim wrote, What? Like being called ugly or dyke doesn't? Bravo, Miss Danvers. If people are going to treat you like a sex object, you might as well be the kind you want to be. Andy wrote, Yeah, the slut kind. Cindy wrote, Hold up, what's with the hate? Andy wrote, Hey, I was in the front row too, and I didn't appreciate having that thrown in my face. Moderator wrote, Well, you could have looked away instead of staring the whole time. Andy wrote, I shouldn't have to look away. This was a school, all right? Kim wrote, Fuck school. I wasn't even there, and I think we're learning a lot more today than on other days. Andy wrote, Like what? You can learn a ton more from a porno site. Cindy wrote, Exactly, so what's the big deal? Guys are all acting like they saw something amazing, but all most of us saw was a girl being a tease. I mean, I like being a tease sometimes too. Maybe not like that, but I don't want people telling me what to wear or what to be ashamed of. I guess I don't know what to think. Emily wrote, Sometimes I don't wear underwear either. You can't tell because I wear a long skirt, but it still makes me a little excited anyway. Andy wrote, Ew, if you don't see anything wrong with that, then what is society coming to? Moderator wrote, I don't know, but no complaints here. Emily wrote, I know one of the teachers was watching when that jerk flashed Kara's ass in the hall, and now I hear they might crack down on the dress code. Just saying. Andy wrote, I guess that's what happens when you dress like a slut. Kim wrote, Actually, that's what happens when boys will be boys, blame the girl. And I thought you were a feminist. Cindy wrote, I laughed when I saw Kara's kitty hiding under her skirt, but I got really turned on when I saw Eric's stiffy. That wasn't hiding at all. So are they going to ban guys' tight jeans too? They are so distracting to us helpless, horny girls. We can't control ourselves. Such bullshit. Emily wrote, all I know is that I am not giving up my crop tops. I busted my ass to get my stomach looking like this. Kim wrote, Can I still at least wear my short shorts? Emily wrote, Ugh, I'm cool with what Kara did, but maybe that was a little too far. Andy wrote, You think? Kim wrote, I hope not. Cindy wrote, Fuck that, I'll wear whatever I want to wear. Moderator wrote, Am I, like, the only guy here? Kim wrote, I see some boys in the member list. They're just watching, I guess. Cindy wrote, Just waiting to see what girls wear panties, no doubt. Kim wrote, Well, shit. Can I type something? Kara asked Alex. Uh, sure, Alex said. Then she helped Kara quickly set up a MySpace account and was able to invite her because Alex was a member. Moderator grinned and wrote, Well, that is intriguing, but I hope she does it again. Cindy wrote, What I don't get is why Kara did it all. I mean, everyone had been so mean to her and her sister for weeks now. I didn't buy any of Cookie's crap. I'd hate everyone if I were them, and I certainly wouldn't be sharing anything so private. So it was funny. I just don't get it. Kara wrote, I just wanted people to see that I can be fun. 
I only have a few friends and there are a lot of lies out there, so I wanted for people to see who I am. Moderator wrote, Oh my god, is that really you, Kara? I bow down before thee. Andy wrote, Yeah, we saw who you are. Is that really the best way to introduce yourself? Kara wrote, Since I moved here, everyone said I can't do this and I can't do that. And then I saw Brittany breaking the rules on the news and I really wanted to break the rules too. Kim wrote, I wish I had the courage to do that too. Not what you or Brittany did exactly, but just breaking the rules like that. So many rules are there just to keep us from being ourselves. Kara wrote, That's so true. Moderator wrote, Are you going to break the rules again tomorrow? Cindy wrote, Hey Kara, Cookie is talking a lot of shit about you, and I'm sure you know. It's none of our business, but if you want to clear the air, I'll believe you. Cindy wrote, Are you still there, Kara? Alex wrote, the stuff that Cookie says is partly true and mostly bullshit. I should know because we were friends once, and I did some of the bullshit for her, but she tried to turn me against Kara, so fuck her. Yes, my adopted sister and I have been in love for a long time now. Yes, we make out. Yes, we did some stupid things because we didn't want people to know. But now, we don't care who knows, we don't care who we offend, and we are tired of hiding. Kara is a free spirit that always felt chained, and she just wanted to be herself, and I totally support her. Lena wrote, I just got here. Thanks for the invite. I can vouch for everything Alex just said. The Danvers girls are the best. Cookie is poison. Kara is a super sweet girl who is always shy. I'm so happy she's getting over that. Cindy wrote, I know, I see you guys in biology every day, but we should hang sometime. Kara wrote, I would like that. Hey, Alex said gently when she saw the tears building in Kara's eyes. You okay? People like me, Kara said in awe while wiping her eyes. People saw my pussy and they like me. Wait, they don't like you because you showed the goods. Alex insisted, unconvincingly. That's not the reason. You only got their attention with that. But now that they noticed you, they see that you're a really nice person. That's a much better reason, don't you think? Kara nodded, then hugged Alex, crying freely. But the truth was that Alex had no idea why people suddenly liked Kara. It was the last thing she would have expected after what Kara had done, but Alex could not be more grateful. Alex hugged Kara gently, marveling at Kara's tears. Alex had forgotten how hard it had been for Kara to make friends when she had started school, and she didn't realize the pain was still in her. But how could it not be? Kara had always believed that something was wrong with herself, that maybe people would never like her because she was too alien. Alex had believed that as well, and so had Alex's parents. After all, when Kara had first arrived on Earth, Kara was a mess, having just lost her world and now thrust into a new world as different from hers as could be. Eliza and Jeremiah wanted to make Kara's life as normal as possible, but Kara stood out like a sheep in a pack of wolves. Her invulnerable skin couldn't protect her, from their teeth. So they had protected her and showed her how to hide who she was. In their home, she was allowed to be Kara, but in the outside world, she had to conform and become a proper American girl. Kara learned amazingly fast, but high school eyes were not fooled. They sensed difference, and difference bred suspicion. And to Alex's enduring shame, Alex had only made matters worse. Alex had been alarmed when she first learned that Kara had befriended Lena and Eric. Alex had been warned several times to avoid them, but when Alex met them, she realized they were also misfits, like Kara. They were perfect for each other. Still, Alex always doubted Kara would fit in with regular students, like cheerleaders and partiers. Those people were the most discerning of social incompatibility, 
she had thought after many years of struggling to fit in herself. Then, Kara put herself out there in a way people could not ignore, as though she didn't care what people thought of her. She went and did the one thing that Alex was sure would make her a total outcast. She acted like an animal in heat, and it was a hit. Many people were not seeing her in any negative light at all. Instead, they saw her as authentic and a trailblazer. Did Alex and her parents have it wrong all that time? Was the key to Kara's happiness just to let Kara be Kara and let the chips fall where they may? Was it even moral of them to try and fix her? Fixing Kara was the last thing on Alex's mind now. When their mom didn't emerge from her bedroom at 9 p.m., Kara convinced Alex to take a shower with her. Alex hesitated. Expressing their love that way seemed wrong, knowing that their disapproving mother was just two rooms away. But Kara assured Alex that Eliza was asleep. When the warm water washed over them, it cleansed them of the stressors of the day, and Alex finally felt a sense of peace. The world finally felt right. When they lay down to sleep that night, they did not need the hole in the wall to whisper in each other's ears.